Hey guys, it's Landon with RH, and in this uh, hopefully short video, I'm going to teach you a little bit about a couple different ways to organize files and folders um, on a survey project. This could apply to a lot of different types of, of projects, but this is a survey project. So we've got a um, couple big surveys coming up. One just started and one is about to start uh, where we have to survey a, a bunch of land uh, that basically hasn't been surveyed uh, since the what they called the GLO went through between 100 and 140 years ago. So the, the GLO or the General Land Office, which is now the BLM, um, they had their own special set of survey records. So we don't <clears throat> typically have to deal with a ton of those records. Um, and, and a lot of where we work in my part of Central California, we are also inside Spanish land grants, which means you don't have the GLO records. But for these surveys that we have coming up, we're, we're going to be uh, dealing with the GLO records. And in a lot of cases, we're going to be going back to the GLO records to, to figure out what type of monument we're going to look for, which is not typical uh, down in the valley. This is up, up, in the, up, up in the foothills and the mountains. So I wanted to um, do a video that shows you guys uh, how you can organize those kind of records. Um, and we'll talk about some of the trade-offs, the, the two different ways to do that. Uh, but we need to come up with a system because we don't have one. We don't we don't deal with the GLO records at scale like like we're going to have to on these two jobs, and it's important. So I want to come up with a system. Now I will tell you that <clears throat> my company is basically um, in a, a constant state of barely controlled mutiny. So um, I tend to be very organized. Probably, probably, I probably go overboard. Um, so we're going to talk about a couple of these ways that you can organize this data. <clears throat> One of the ways I like, that is not the way I'm going to use. I'm going to show it to you, but I'm not going to use that way because my people probably will not like that system. <laughs> so I'm going, to do the, I'm going to do the method number two I'm going to show you. Um, so anyways, let's go in and take a look. So right now, um, our project coordinator, Elaine, she went ahead and... and she went ahead and pulled the GLO records. Okay, and I think I have another video on our YouTube Learning Channel where I show you how to do that with the BLM website. I'll try and remember to have Lori link, link to that video in the description for this video on, on YouTube. Um, so the first thing we're going to do <coughs> is all these records here are GLO records. Okay, so we, right now they're in the filed survey maps folder. But we use those for in California for surveys that are filed at the county level. So we have three three kinds: records of survey, parcel maps, and subdivision maps. We also have what we call corner records. So that's what goes in the filed survey maps folder. So I'm going to just go ahead and cut these GLO records, and we're going to move them up, and we're going to make a new folder because they're really uh, we'll paste them in. We'll make a new folder because they're really a new kind of record, and we're going to call it GLO. So I'm going to take all those GLO records and we'll move them in there. Now, there's a, there's a couple different method, methods, as I mentioned, that you can use to organize files and folders. So the first method that I'm going to show you is, is what you call the nested folder method or the subfolder method. And that's where you create a lot of structures in your files using folders and subfolders. That's the method I prefer. Now. The advantages of that method is, um, you know, the data is very structured. So if you're the type of person that likes structure, that you will probably favor that that method. the The downside of that method is it's a, it's more complex, you know, um, and and there's some limitations. You know, we we use OneDrive. Um, we use OneDrive um, here at RH. So there's a limit to how many characters we can have on a file path so a lot of nested folders can create problems but I'm going to show you how we would do it with that method first so we have two or three townships that we're surveying in and these townships what's called a township six miles by six miles square um, sometimes get surveyed more than once so sometimes the whole thing gets surveyed again and sometimes just parts of it get resurveyed so you got to 
got to find a way to organize that information. Okay, so one way to do that, if we, if we go with method one, which is the nested folder method, is we just start making folders. So for example, we might make a folder um, for the first township. So that's T2 North Range 15 East. So I see that that's the first first township I have here. And then um, let's do another one for, for, the, for T4. So then we could say, all right, we're going to do another folder T4 North R17 East. Okay. <clears throat> now, inside of those folders, we could say, all right, these, these got surveyed more than one time. So what we're going to do is we're going to do another folder for every year. Let's say 1892 was the first, and then 1908 was the, was the second survey in the township, GLO survey. Okay, so you could organize it like that. Okay, so you you start to build up uh, you start to build up a, a folder structure. Okay, so let, I was going to try and show you guys that over here on this side. So you can kind of see we're building that structure now, right? Okay, so that's the method I would probably use left to my own devices. Okay, so I would probably nest things by, you know, I'd have a folder for each year. You'd have for a folder for the township, then a folder for each year. And then I, I might do something crazy like this, you know, in, in each one of these. Um, you know, I, I might do something uh, for field notes and plats. Okay. Um, now, I don't know that I would quite go this deep on my nesting because we probably only have one PDF of field notes and one PDF plat for each year. Uh, but certainly if I thought I was going to have multiple plats or note notebooks for one year, I would probably use this system. So that's the first method. It's, it's called nesting, nested folders or subfolders. Okay. My partner, Danny, hates that, all right? And, and I do enjoy aggravating him occasionally, but he is also my friend, and so I do not want to do that. I don't want to use that method. Okay, so I'm going to show you the other method, which is what I call the bucket method. Okay, and in the bucket method, you just everything goes in, in the parent folder. So you don't use subfolders to organize. And what you do is you organize primarily with the file name. And the, and what you're going for is you want to put a prefix on your file name so that when you sort by name, things kind of sort into in, in the order that they would appear in folders. Okay. So you can kind of see we've done that here. Right, but um, the file naming isn't super isn't super um, consistent. Okay, so what I would do to just if I was going to change this is I would go in and say, all right, um, I would first of all use leading zeros on the townships and range, so they're both two digits and they stack right, stack properly. Um, and then what I would probably do is put the year at the end of the township plat. So this is the plat. Um, so I'm gonna, I don't know this year, but let's just say it's 1890, and then I'm probably gonna put plat on here. Okay, and then um, now here we have field notes. Okay, um, so we're almost all the way there. I would go T03 North, range 18 East, field notes. Okay, so you're just, you're really using the, 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 the name uh, to create the structure. Right, and so you can see if I do this for very long, pretty soon I'm gonna have everything stacking by township. Right, okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and finish this, and then I'll unpause the video so you can see what it looks like properly sorted with the, with the right names. Okay guys, so I got these renamed. <clears throat> so let me, uh, just talk about the, the elements in the file naming convention that I came up with. And then we'll talk about um, what how critical is that and um, some edge cases that make this a little clunky, okay? So w what I've done is I've got the first element is the township, then I have the range, 
Okay, we put leading zeros in the township numbers so they stack properly. And, and we don't have the issue on this project, but um, you don't want your township 10 to stack before your township 2 or your township 21 to stack before your township 3. That's why you put the leading zero in. And I've got the range. Then I've got the year of either the plat or the field notes. Okay. Then I've got um, either PT for partial township or WT for whole township. Okay, and then the, at the end we have an abbreviation to tell us either it's field notes or plats. And I'm sorry, I realized I said FT there instead of WT. Okay, so what what you can see is that the file name now is part of the, the file name, at least the file name prefix is taking the place of a folder, right? So we're, we're stacking now by township and range, right? So it, we're substituting the, the structure of the file name for the actual folder structure that I showed you with the other method. Now that works. There's a couple uh, limitations to this, this method. One is, um, you know, you can only cram so much information in a file name. So at some point you, you need to... Um, you know, the purpose of your file name should should be to uniquely identify the file. It shouldn't be to store a bunch of metadata. Um, if you need metadata, create a metadata metadata file. You know, create a text file with some metadata or a spreadsheet in here that that uh, stores the metadata for each of the files in a table, one row per file. But um, don't try and cram it all in your file name. Um, and then the other limitation is, you know, we can sort by township and range here, but we can't really sort by, um, you know, we can't sort with this structure and get all the field notes at the top and all the plots at the bottom. There just, there isn't an easy way to do that. The other limitation of this system is, is when you get, um, uh, we have two files here that actually cover more than one township and range. So that's a little awkward in our system, right? So there isn't a good solution to that, um, but, and I don't love this, but I think what I would do here in this situation is I would actually make a copy of that file. Now I can do this because these these are existing files that that we're just editing. I mean that we're just reading. We're never going to edit these, so I would never do this with drawings, duplicate data like this. But I think for for my purposes, I'm actually going to go ahead and create a duplicate of that file, and then. I'm going to just rename it one name for each um, township. Now, like I said, uh, that is not elegant. I, I don't love that. Um, but if you're not doing that, you're trying to cram, you know, you could have a file with two or three townships in the file name. Like at some point, that gets really clunky, right? Um, now, the advantage of doing that with a folder system is. Um, if you if, if, if you use the first method with subfolders, you could actually just have a, a file shortcut instead of a copy of the file in one of the folders so that the file wasn't duplicated. But I'm going to go ahead and do it. I, I think that's probably the best solution that I have for this particular instance. Okay, and I know I had one more of those. Um, it's this one right here. So I've got uh, this particular set of field notes covers two townships. Okay. Um, oh, it was 1932 was the date and this is a, uh, not the whole it's a partial township two parts of partial portions of two townships okay and to really to make our system work you have to cut that and paste it and duplicate it so the other range was 19 east. Okay, and I and I may think of a of a different solution that works better right now, but with this bucket method right now, I can't think of another uh, good way to do it. Okay, so now I'm done. You can see uh, the the GLO records are stacking in a reasonable method now, right? Um, and my, my people have a decent shot at finding what they need. Let me just conclude by saying there's no right or wrong way to do this. Neither method is right or wrong. Um, and it doesn't really matter if you put the year first instead of the township range. Right? The, the important thing is to be 
consist have a system and be consistent. 